starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington, Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington, James Douglas as Stephen Cord. Tom Winter spent the long hours of the night walking along the wharf, the nearby rocky coast, and the back roads around Peyton Place. He has had to face a truth about himself, to admit that he has feelings for young Jill Smith, feelings that he must fight if he is to remain true to his calling, if he is to remain married to Susan Winter. This morning, Tom has concluded that the only way to control his own emotions is to repair the fragments of his marriage. Reverend Winter's residence. Good morning. Jill, this is Reverend Winter. Oh, morning, Reverend. You're up and out nice and early this morning. Can I talk to Mrs. Winter, please? It's important. Okay, I'll, I'll go upstairs and get her. Just a minute. Mrs. Winter? husband this awful sunshiny morning. He's fine, Mrs. Winter. Oh. Well, may I ask what you told him, and then what he told you, and then what you told him, and then what he told you? <laughs> Come on. Oh. Come on. Pull down the shade. I think I had enough sunshine. What did he say when you told him I was intoxicated? He just said he'd call back. But I told him you were in the shower. You what? I told him you were in the shower, which is where I think you really ought to be, Mrs. Winter if you'll excuse my saying so. I mean, after all, I would think after the incident at the church that you would have been glad to tell him that I was drunk. Nothing happened between Joe Rossi and me. Nothing. He held me and I went limp just like a rag doll. 
What was I supposed to do, beat him up? I just saw two people embracing in the church, and I didn't realize one of them wasn't cooperating, and I'm sorry. Okay. I'll help you take that shower now. It's sober up time? It's sober up time. Wait out. Oh, come on. Oh. Okay. You know something, Joe? My husband didn't come to bed last night. You mustn't talk to me about these things, Mrs. Winter. Please. No, I know. I know I'm drunk. I know. But what I'm saying is not drunk. And I think he was guilty. That's what I think. I really do. I mean, no. what, what do you say? Come on. Huh? Come on, Mrs. Winter. It's all right. Come on. Just take off your clothes, Mrs. I don't want to take off my clothes. Well, you can't take a shower with your clothes I on. I always take showers with my clothes on. <laughs> all right, Mrs. Winter. Like it. It's monumental. Yes. You were conspicuous by your absence from music appreciation today, as you were yesterday and the day before that and the day before that. Can you've covered for me with old Mr. Uh, what's his name? Harkness. Mrs. Harkness. Oh well. Old Mrs. Harkness knows that I know everything there is to know about music appreciation. Mrs. Harkness has the power to demolish you if you don't A, attend class, B, pretend as though you're paying attention, and C, copy the answers off my paper. He's got you... She. She's got you faked out of your sneakers. And you'd rather not be faked out of your sneakers and not graduate. What are you doing? Devaluating sneakers? Next thing you know, you'll be putting on walking sticks, and then you'll You know, probably... they don't give gold records to people who don't pass music appreciation. Wow. Foul blow. You know how I long for a gold record. I... I would say anything. I would do anything. I... I would do practically anything to keep Mrs. Harkness... Or, or Mr. Harkness, for that matter, from... from having the satisfaction of demolishing a member of my generation. But why help me? You and I both know that poor, tone-deaf Audrey Tuttle is also flunking in class. You sit next to me in class, that's all. Is that the only reason? It's embarrassing. Never mind that. Why me? Because I am starstruck, and you are the only boy that I know in town who is in show business. Oh, wow. All right. With what composition did Bach first attract the attention of his contemporaries? How long do I have to answer? Time's up. Uh, what modern composers are most influenced by Bach? Everybody, baby. Multiple choice. Which of the following was Bach's best friend? Uh, Otto Schlemming, Rudolf von Kuhnholz, or... You're making up those names. I am not. But I appreciate Bach. I always have and I always will. So what difference does it make who his best friend is, huh? If you don't pass music appreciation, you do not graduate from high school, and that means that you cannot go on to college or university. And then I get to play the electric bugle in the army band. All because you couldn't tell Mrs. Harkness who Bach's best friend was. Nag, 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 nag. Where did you stop reading this? Well, uh, we'd better start with, um, man's first attempt to make music. Chapter one. You know we're almost through with the book. Oh, go help poor Audrey Tuttle, will you? And leave me alone.
Say, uh, when did you start encouraging types like Joe Rossi? Did I thank you for helping me get rid of him? Yes, but that's not what I asked you. I loathe him, I detest him, I can't bear him, and one more thing, I don't like him, okay? No, not okay. Look, if you're really going to help me... I am. I need my strength. Four or five hamburgers, a couple of bowls of chili, a few malts, pizza, stuff like that. I thought you'd never ask. French fries, a lot of Chinese foods, maple syrup and pancakes. Just a little of hobie until dinner time. Hi, Betty. Uh, where were you when the work was here? Oh, out getting myself an ulcer. What are you talking about? Somebody opened up another motorcycle shop down the street. There might as well be. How would you like to sell every one of these bikes and end up with a net profit of $1.75? What are you talking about? I'm talking about two country squares who went into business for themselves and didn't read the contract they were signing. What do you mean, didn't read the contract? We read them, we went over them with a lawyer. Yeah, with a franchise we signed could put us right in the poorhouse. It's not the distributor's fault. Somebody dropped the ball along the line. Stephen Cord told me. Stephen, what did he have to do with it? Well, he was at the courthouse. He was at the county clerk's desk, and he saw our papers, our contracts, and he gave him a quick once-over. He said there's so many loopholes in that contract, if you drive one of these bikes right through them. And that's according to Stephen. According to Stephen. Well, I asked him to show me. So he got out the papers, and he showed me, right in black and white, how we signed our lives away. You know, if I hear the word whereas one more time, I'll go out of my mind. Or that we're in trouble? Well, not anymore. What do you mean? Stephen's taking care of it. You allowed Stephen to look over those papers? I not only allowed him, I nearly begged him. Look, I know the answer's gonna be no. But there's no question in my mind that we should hire him. No. I'm not saying you have to like him. But you do have to admit that he's done something positive for us. He pulled us out of a hole. Mm, and dropped us into a deeper one. Betty, would it bug you too much if we did hire him? That's not a fair question. Oh, sure it is, and I'll answer it. Yes, it really would bug me to have to see him and deal with him. There'd be telephone calls and messages I'd have to take. There'd be papers to be delivered. There'd be other meetings. It'd be impossible not to have some contact with him. Norman, our divorce was a very bad thing. You understand that? Yeah, I know. And I took all that into consideration and weighed it against what we're trying to do. And you know something? It still comes out the same. We should hire him. I think you got your thumb on the scale. Is that right? Well, ask yourself a question. Are we running a business or a hobby? Or are we here just killing time? Are we going to make it? I mean, really make it. We'll make it, Norman. We'll make it without Stephen. Come on, Rod. That's just Harrington pride talking. Well, you don't mind if I have a little, do you? Not a bit. But how much pride are you going to have left? when you find out we blew the business because of poor advice. And for the same price, you can get the best. I don't know. We do have to have the best. The best available. Well, then there really isn't any argument, is there? Just that same old one. 